Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad then. Can anybody magnify the Lord with me? Has he done anything good for you? Hallelujah. Some years ago, they put out a movie called Thank God It's Friday. But before that, 2,000 years ago, there was another Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Where Jesus hung there and died for us. And we're able to stand here today and not be ashamed and declare the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will y'all help me thank and celebrate our pastor, Pastor John Jenkins. Let's give him a hand. And his wonderful wife, Trina. These folks are very gracious. You may have your seat. I'm not going to keep you long. They're very gracious. The mercies that God has extended to them, they willingly share with others. Praise God. And I'm thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to be here today. I want to thank Grace Cathedral. Grace, if you're in the house, Grace and Grace friends. God bless y'all. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot of that, but I do have a special guest, a friend of mine, Chief Z. Zima Williams of the Redskins. That's my partner right there. My wife of 36 years. Now she will tell you, those of you all that know her know she got jokes. She would tell you I never did ask her to marry her. That's, what she, that's her story. Now the way I recall it, I said, will you go with me? <laughs> you know she got jokes. The way she is now is the way she was then. She said, go with you where? <laughs> to McDonald's? And we've been going for 36 years. Some of my favorite people are here, my grandkids. We got four of them. I saw one or two. Y'all wave your hands. We got four grandchildren. They are my favorite people. You can keep your seats. You may know this verse. You should know it. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Yeah. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your mercies, for your goodness and your grace. I thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. God, I ask you to help us to declare what we think we've discovered in this word tonight. Help me, give me the words to express this word. Bless your people that have gathered here. Somebody needs to be saved. Somebody needs to return to Christ. Somebody's not sure. Somebody needs to be planted. God, it's not by accident that we are here today. Bless us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The book of Philippians is a very familiar book. Uh, Paul is the writer of this book, and he's writing this book, and it's really just a note. He's writing them a thank you note. He's thanking them for giving assistance to him in his time of need. But being the pro prolific writer that he is, Paul always is going to take an opportunity to be the pastor. So while he's thanking them for being a blessing to him, then he... Uh, brings up a few issues that he wants to deal with. 
That, that was his style. He would commend them, and then he would bring up, a, bring up a subject. He wanted to talk to them about the humility. You know, he brought, brought up the subject of humility. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was two sisters that worked together in ministry. There was a little squabble going on, and he talked to them a little bit about unity. Now, I know there's not anyone in ministry together, working together in ministry in this church that got a little squabbles going on. But he talked to them about unity. He said, be of the same mind. Then he goes on to talk about his current situation. And the whole time he is just pouring into these people and he's encouraging them. Now my question is, how is it that Paul, given the context of his situation, was able to continually encourage people when at the time that he wrote this note, he was in jail? I don't know too many of us that would be in a tough bind, in, in a tough situation, and would uh, stop what we're doing and take the focus off of us and be concerned about somebody else. How is it that Paul was able to be a constant encouragement, give encouragement to people when he himself was in jail? Well, it's in the text. He knew God. As I tag this text, knowing Christ. Knowing Christ. Paul was able to give encouragement, although he was going through tough times and tough situations, because he knew Christ. Now, I know the churches are going to be filled all over the country, all over, over the world this weekend. I got a sneaky suspicion not everybody really knows Christ. They're just making their annual sojourn to church. As a matter of fact, there may be some of us that go to church on the regular base, basis that really don't know Christ like we purport we do. Or we put on a good public display. But I, I, I'm a little concerned. We put on such a good show, there should be an Academy Award passed out for some of the pretenders that march to church. We've got the category for the best dressed. We've got the category for the best shout. We've got the category for the most influential. And the winner is. But Paul declares, he said, that I may know Christ. I don't want to just put on a public display, but I want to have private devotion. My first point is we have to know Christ and have an intimate relationship with him. That I may know him, not just intellect, not intellectually, not just information, but an intimate relationship with him. He said that I may know him, that I may have a personal intimate relationship with Christ. I wonder if we really had the relationship with, with Christ, do we really know him like we say we do? We put on a good show, but do we really know him? Not just the information, not just the intellect, but really have personal involvement. The, 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 the kind of musings that go on when you're by yourself or in a crowd and you can talk to him and he can talk to you and no doubt somebody's in an intimate moment with Christ right now every time you think of the goodness of the Lord your soul cries out hallelujah I don't know what your week was like I don't know what your day was like but because you're of, because you know Christ you was able to pray your way through every situation I know you're having a moment right now, you're talking to him. I, I, I hear you saying amen, but you're really praising God. Those that know Christ always maintain a consistent, intimate relationship with him. That no matter what's going on, you can get a word to him and he can get a word to you. Do you really know him? Man, some of us are still musing from Sunday. Here's my worship. 
Praise God. We're, 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 still, we're still musing. Ever since Sunday, we've been talking about it. We've, we've been asking God. We say, here's my worship. Take joy in it. I want to be your dwelling place. Put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. I'm talking about the type of intimacy with God that no matter what's going on, you can be in a situation where you are bound, but because you know Christ, you can be all right. Paul said on one occasion, I'm bound, but the word of God is not bound. You can have people talking about you, uh, 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 trying to add affliction to your life, but because you know Christ, because you have an intimate relationship with him, you're able to make it. You're able to go through to know Christ means to gain practical day-by-day -day acquaintance with him in such an intimate way that one becomes more Christ-like to the degree that you desire that the life of Christ be reproduced. If I had the grace to say it like I need to say it, but the type of intimacy with Christ, that you want to be Christ-like, that there be some reproduction going on. Do you really know him? Praise God. Knowing Christ is more than just coming to church. It's more than just getting the information. A lot of people got the facts. They know what's going on. But not only does Paul want to know Christ, he doesn't only want to have an intimate relationship with Christ, but he is impacted, number two, impacted by his resurrection. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Now that's the game changer right there. The resurrection of Christ. Everything we stand on is because he rose from the dead. That's the game changer. All the other religions in the world cannot hold to this claim. Christ uh, arose from the dead. And we're able to uh, declare the gospel of Jesus Christ and magnify him. Man, uh, not just the event, but the experience. Paul said that I may know him and the power of, not the power in, not the episode, not the historical facts, but a day-by-day -day experience. Not just the event, but I want to walk with him. I want to talk with him each and every day. I want to have the power of his resurrection resided in my life and in my spirit. Impacted by his, revel his resurrection. I was once a sinner in the world without God. Subject to spend eternity without God but Jesus was sent in the fullness of time to shed his blood for my sin and in one day thank God it was it was Friday one day he came and he died for our sins now y'all already read Matthew chapter 27 praise God and you didn't see my notes but on that day there was a cry from the cross he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was a cry from the spectators as they looked on. And they said, he's calling on Elijah. Let's see if he will come and help. There was a cry from the sanctuary. The veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom, providing access for you and I. There was a cry from the stones. The earth quaked and the rocks split, praise God. There was a cry from the saints. The graves were opened. The bodies of the saints that had fallen to sleep was raised. There was a cry from the soldier. He said, truly. So he hung there and died. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. I don't know what everybody did on Saturday. It was the Sabbath day. But on Sunday morning, he rose. And I'm living in the experience of the power of his resurrection. That's the game changer. 
Paul was in chains when he was writing this thank you letter. But like we heard on Sunday, break, chain, break. The power of his resurrection, the day by day experience of living in the power of his resurrection will help you. So wherever you're bound, the experience of that resurrection Whatever's dead in your life, maybe your marriage is going through something. God can raise it up. Maybe you're going through something in your body. God can raise that up. Maybe there's a, 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 a vice or something that has gripped your life and you can't seem to make your way out of it. God can raise. He can raise it up. The power of his resurrection. Now I'm about to lose you. We got our intimate relationship with Christ. We are impacted by his resurrection. Going to lose about 80% of the church tonight. After developing this intimate relationship and this impactful relationship with Christ, he said that I may know him, the powers of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. If you really know Christ, Number three, you will become involved or become a partner with Christ. Always quiet. The fellowship of his sufferings. It takes divine strength to suffer for Christ. That's why the power of his resurrection is put before the fellowship of his suffering problem is we don't want to get involved <laughs> pastor I'm a member of the, of the first Baptist church of Glen Arden, but you don't want to get involved I have an intimate relationship with Christ I'm impacted by his resurrection but you don't want to get involved I, he said, the fellowship of his sufferings. In other words, we want the fellowship, we want the communion, but we don't want the conflict. We like coming to the sanctuary, we don't want to be bothered with the struggle. We got some good worship going on, but we don't want to do the work. <laughs> that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship, the fellowship. My God, I know I'm gonna lose you because you don't want to do nothing. You just want to come to church, stay around the edge. Story told of a family that was at home, there was settled in for the night everyone was in bed and the parents heard a thump went to the young man's room and the little boy had fell out the bed they said how'd you fall out the bed he said well i stayed too close to where i got in and a lot of you you're too close to where you got in beyond the right hand fellowship can we just move it on in because you're going to fall out the bed And you're going to bump your head and you're going to wonder how it happened because you won't get involved. Well, there was a divine moment when I was introduced to Pastor Jenkins and he said to me, he said, if there's anything that we can do to help you, feel free. Well, that was an open invitation. I was able to take members from our, our little Bible class and, and, and funnel them into the Bible Institute, in case you haven't heard of it, they have a Bible Institute here, and, be, and was able to train my leaders and teach them, and they were able to get the guidance and the instructions to do the things that I needed them to do, but didn't know how to get it done and discover the place to get it done. And so we got involved. 
One of the most impactful moments of my life by being involved with this church, I discovered that I was a, how can I put it, a missional pastor. I'm involved. I'm connected. You say, Pastor, this is a big church, you know, uh, we can get lost. The way, you not, the way you stay connected is you join a ministry. And so, so since I was bootlegging, I discovered a passion for missions. So the global mission ministry, oh man, I found, I found my niche there been all over the world yeah. preaching yeah. teaching and cross training doing whatever needed to be done yeah. man in my first trip was to the ukraine i thought it was going to be an easy trip i said let me i don't want to go to africa let me pick some place easy boy did i know <laughs> but one thing led to another and then, and then my wife and, and, and members of our church, we got involved, not just foreign mission, but Nashville, Maryland, it's just down the street. New Orleans, it's just down the street. Got involved. Then I, then I discovered prison ministry. Those are my two ministries, global missions and prison ministry. Although when I go up to Hagerstown or Opatux and half the people there I know, but... When I, was, when I was filling out the application, I didn't know if it was going to go through. But getting involved, it would be inconsistent for us to live in luxury and ease in a world where our Lord is rejected. Matter of fact, he's still being rejected now. The standards, his standards have been rejected. Romans 1.28 says they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. But we won't get involved. Last election year, we lost some critical votes with the numbers that packed churches it seemed like the boat could have went God's way, but we don't want to get involved with the cause of Christ. For those who don't like to retain God in their knowledge, they're on their job every day pushing their issue. They don't sleep and they're well invested, but we don't want to get involved. Do you really know Christ? Beyond your intimate relationship and the impact of his resurrection, will you dare get involved? Man, I like, I, I, I like uh, Pastor Maurice Watson. He puts it this way when he preaches from Isaiah 59. He says, truth is in trouble. Why? Because justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the streets and equity cannot enter. Why? Because we won't get involved. <laughs> we like the communion, not the conflict. We want the sanctuary, not the struggle. We want the worship, not the work. We want the triumph, but not the trouble. <laughs> Let me leave y'all alone. I got one more thing, one more thing. So we got we're intimate relationship with Christ impacted by his resurrection. I don't know about this involvement, y'all. Kind of put the brakes on, on that one. But the last thing, he said, being conformed to his death. To imitate Christ. You gotta take it that far. Cause you're in too deep now. If you're intimate with him, if you're impacted by him, and if you are involved, that you want, you want to imitate him. You want to be conformed to the image of Christ. 
Man, I, 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 in, in our life and in death, we, we are being conformed. I like, I like the way Malachi puts it, Malachi 3 and 3, he says, he sits as a refiner and a purifier of silver. Man, there was a couple of ladies that wanted to, that was interested in this verse, and they said, well, let's go to a, re, a, a, a refiner and see, have him explain the process to us. And they did that. And the, the young man, he explained the process to them. He said, look, I, I put the fire and, and, and I wait and I burn off all, the, all of the impurities. And so they was very pleased with what he said. But they asked him, but do you sit there? He said, oh, yeah, I sit there. So they was happy with what he told them. And they were on their way. But then he stopped them. I said, wait a minute. That's not all I do. I sit there and I keep my eye on them he says I sit there and I keep my eye on them because the purifying process is not complete until I see my own image <laughs> being conformed so you're going through some heated situations right now but you're in his hands being conformed and, and, and to all of the, the to, until the process is complete, until all of a sudden we're, we're looking at you and we're looking at Christ and we can't tell the difference because there's a reflection. You know how it is with some couples that, that they live together so long they begin to act alike, think alike, and, and, all, and, all, and then begin to almost look alike and they favor each other. And if they have children, they favor. And there's a reflection. I, I, I want to imitate Christ. So whatever has to be done, God do it. Paul was in chains, but he was able to encourage others because he knew Christ. He was being persecuted. He was able to go beyond the persecution and still uh, impart it to others because he had an intimate relationship with Christ. He was impacted by the resurrection. He was involved in the cause of Christ and he was set out to imitate Christ, being conformed, wait a minute, unto his death. We didn't read verse 11. But there's a comment here that says, if by any means... I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Now, this is just me. In my opinion, I think maybe Paul, from time to time, began to reflect and remember Stephen's. When Paul was at his persecution, Paul was there when Stephen was being stoned. And they laid their garments at the apostles' feet at this young man named Saul as he approved. I can imagine he reflected and remember what he saw. He saw a, a, a man being stoned to death, but a man that had an intimate relationship with God, somebody that really knew God. He, he saw a man being stoned, but he, 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 now he remembers that this guy must have been impacted by the power of this resurrection. This man was involved to the, to the point that he was willing to lay down his life. As a matter of fact, his face looked like an angel as he was being conformed unto death. And, and, and Paul began to re remember that he, he, while he was being stoned to death, that he praised God and then prayed for those that was persecuting him. I, I got to think that Paul had that image. And so Paul was one that not to be outdone would have it no other way. He said, I've been poured out. I have fought a good fight. If I die, that's good. If I don't die, that's good. If I die, that's Christ. But if I don't die, I'm helping you. He said, I, I really don't know which way I should choose. But for right now, because I know Christ, it's better for me to stay so that I can help you. Do you know Christ? Who are you trying to help? Are you willing to put your stuff aside and help somebody else? I'm just wondering, do we really know Christ like we say we know him? I'm just wondering if we, I know we talk a good game. 
But I, 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 the seasons are coming, the time is upon us where we are going to be tested. Your commitment to Christ is going to be tested because God has a way of proving everything that he uses. So he's prepared a furnace. He may have prepared some bonds. Paul said these chains are for the cause of Christ. If we really know Christ, then we're going to stand up in this hour. We're not going to allow what goes on in society dictate our theology, what we know about God. But we're going to allow theology to help us deal with whatever's going on in society. The politicians may change because of the social order of the day, the social culture of the day. But my God doesn't change. Our God is consistent. And I believe that those that know God are going to be called upon to take a stand. To let somebody know whose side are you on. If you're on the Lord's side, make a choice. Make a decision today. Who are you going to serve? If you're going to serve them, and we just saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then don't back up. I know we've not resisted unto blood striving against sin, but the challenge is coming. It's going to knock on your door. Ready or not, it's already upon us. And you're going to have to make some decisions. If you know Christ, it's going to show. Praise God. Hallelujah. There may be somebody here right now that don't know Christ. And you've come at a great time. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the time to come and get to know him. You too can have an intimate relationship with him. You too can be impacted by the power of his resurrection. You too can become involved in the cause of Christ. You too can imitate Christ. Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I used to be in church, but I stayed too close to where I got in, and now I'm not in. I need to, I, I backslid. Today will be a good day to return to Christ. Amen. There may be somebody here that say, Pastor, I'm just not sure about any of it, and I need some clarity and some understanding about it. You can come. And like Pastor always said, this here is a good church. <laughs> if you're not connected, you're not involved, and you say you know Christ, now will be a good time, a good season in your life to be planted in a church. If you've never committed your life to Christ, you want to get saved today, come. Praise God. <laughs>